How's it going everyone? John here. Welcome to the channel and welcome to today's video. Today I want to talk about bitrate and how it applies to live streaming and why it is a very important factor when it comes to setting up your encoder or even if you're streaming on console. I noticed on the Xbox Series X they have it to where you can set bit rates now. So I wanted to go over this that way you can understand how it affects your stream. But before I do that, I want to talk about today's sponsor. So today's sponsor is own.tv. If you're looking for professional overlays that you can completely change to your own liking for your own channel and everything like that, you can because they are all module. So you're going to be able to have full stream packages that we have everything you need right out of the gate. And if you also need some other stuff for your stream, like animated emotes, static emotes, sub badges, bit badges, stuff for your stream deck, they have a ton of things for you. So be sure to go ahead and take a look at the video description below. And if you do decide you want to buy something, use the promo code Creovox at checkout. So that way you can save 50% on your entire order. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into today's video about bitrate. Now, when it comes to streaming, your upload speed is the most important part of your internet speed. And I'm going to transition us over to the computer in just a moment. That way you can kind of see how to test your speeds and understand the different types of bit rates that are available based on the speed number that you get and everything like that. Um, but when it comes to your bit rate, the upload speed, like I said, is the most important factor because that is what you have to have a lot of whenever it comes to streaming. When your download speed is really high, it really doesn't mean much. Now, I always recommend that you have a wired connection, whether you're on a PC or if you're on a console, because having a wired connection going directly to the modem or directly to your router is going to give you the most consistent speeds compared to doing it through Wi-Fi. If you can only do Wi-Fi, then I recommend getting like a gateway or something. That way you can still plug it directly into that extender in some way to get a better overall speed versus just doing it Wi-Fi to your computer or Wi-Fi to your console because you're going to have to worry about other obstacles. So if you have like, say the router is upstairs and you're downstairs in the basement or you're downstairs on the first floor, you're going to have to go through the floor walls if it's in a different room. And the more obstacles that that internet speed has to go through when it's going through Wi-Fi, the weaker it gets. The other thing too, is if you have too many devices on that same Wi-Fi signal, then it's going to be even weaker. So let's say you have 20 upload speed for your, for your upload, right? And you're doing it through Wi-Fi. You have your phone, you have a tablet, console, smart TV, home device, whether it's like an Alexa or something, all those different things will chisel at the Wi-Fi because it's connected to it. Now, if you have stuff on the Wi-Fi and you're wired, then you'll be able to prioritize the wired connection over the Wi-Fi connection. And if you really want to get into it, you can go into your actual router and you can set it to where a certain device gets higher priority for it versus some of the other devices. That's way more advanced stuff. Uh, if you really have questions about that, I can go about that in a different video, but for right now, just know that Wi-Fi connection, you're going to have to go through obstacles and also you're going to have other devices possibly attached to it, which will chisel at the total speed. That's why I recommend wired. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump over to the computer and I'll kind of show you how you can test your speeds and we can talk about the different types of bit rates for Twitch and for YouTube. Okay. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go to Google and you're going to type in speed test here in the search. It's going to give you this one right here. So if we run this real quick, you're going to see that it's going to do your download first. And then once the download is finished, it will then do the upload. And I'm going to show you another website as well. And I'll show you speed test. Now I, I say do both of these just so that way you can kind of compare and see, you know, if you're getting the same result or if you're getting a different variation in terms of like the server location, the latency and everything like that. But having this, this is pretty good. This is uh, very good for, for live streaming and I'm on a wired connection. So the next one is actual speedtest.net. 
and we're gonna do it again. It's gonna choose a different server. You can change the server if you want to, and we're gonna see if we get a better results through here, or did we have better results through the first one? But again, it's gonna run the download first, and then it's gonna run the upload. All right, download is finished. And then we're just gonna wait for the upload to start. There it goes. Took a minute there. But it seems like we're pretty consistent. Let's say this is showing about 23. And here we had 22. This roughly will give you a good idea of what your speed is. Again, this is a wired connection. I would still recommend you doing this even if you're on a Wi-Fi connection. That way you can see what your Wi-Fi connection is currently once you have everything attached to it. And once you have that, then I'm going to link this for you, but this is the stream.twitch.tv slash encoding. And what this will show you is the different types of specs that you can do. So if you are using a graphics card, this is going to be right here. So if you're using an NVIDIA graphics card for your overall settings in your stream encoder, this is what you're going to want to use. If you're using the actual processor, then this is what you're going to want to use. Now for console, if you're streaming on console, the only thing you really have to pay attention to probably is these first two. So if you're able to select a resolution for your stream, then you can select the resolution there. But this is what you need to pay attention to is the bit rates. So the KBPS, this is just in, in easy terms to understand 6,000 means you have six upload. Now you don't want to use your full six upload. This is where it gets a little, a little tricky. So if you have 20 for your upload, you can do 6,000, no problem. Because that means you would have a 20,000 KBPS if you have 20 upload. So you have plenty of wiggle room if you're doing a 6,000. But if you only have, let's say 10 up, you do not want to do 6,000. Because if you have other devices on there, like phones, computers, and stuff like that, if someone's streaming Netflix, this is going to cause a lot of lag, a lot of crashing of the stream. So you're gonna to wanna to bring it down probably to about 45 to 3,000, maybe 3,500. And you will wanna bring your resolution down too. So pay attention to the bitrate and the resolution and also what your upload speed is. Now, if you're on YouTube, YouTube's got a few drop downs here. Most of the time uh, for, for YouTube, people are able to choose their resolution that they want to watch in, unlike with Twitch. So with Twitch, if you are streaming in 1080p, 60 FPS, and it's very laggy and everything like that, people are not going to be able to watch it because they can't change the resolution. Even if you're an affiliate, it might not be giving you the transcoding that you need. But if you're a partner, then it doesn't matter. But sometimes they do give you the transcoding for affiliates. But if they don't, then people are not going to be able to watch because you have your settings too high. So I usually recommend the sweet spot of either doing 1080p 30 FPS or 720p 60 FPS. That way people will be able to watch it for the most part for wherever they are. Because if you look, the bit rates are the exact same. So 4,500, 4,500 here. And that's not bad. 720p 60 FPS, it's still a good stream quality. You know, people are gonna be able to watch it. They're gonna still be able to have pretty high visuals to watch. So I would recommend this area right here for kind of like the the middle ground but when it comes to youtube you can let's say we want to do 1080p 60 fps it's still 4500 to 9000 so 4500 at the low end so it might be a bit greeny but with 9000 being at the highest that's still pretty high if you only have a 10 upload so you still want to keep it around 4500 even if you were to do 1080p 60 fps on youtube now for 720p 60 fps for 
YouTube, you can do it as high as 6,000. And 6,000 might not be too bad in terms of if other people want to use the internet, but I would still bring it around 4,500, even at the 720p 60 FPS. That way there's still wiggle room and you're not having any lag in your games. You're not having any lag um, on the stream and there's still wiggle room for other people to use other devices and not cause any problems on their end. But that pretty much covers bitrate. You know, you want to make sure that you have a decent speed, you know, preferably 20 up. That way it gives you a good enough wiggle room. Having a wired connection versus a Wi-Fi connection and making sure that you are choosing the proper bitrate. So again, 4,500 would be 4.5 upload. 6,000 would be six upload and download means nothing. Download means absolutely nothing when it comes to streaming. So do keep that in mind. Um, and then of course with YouTube, you have a little bit more of a wiggle room if you wanted to go on higher settings because people have the options to change the resolution because they automatically give you the transcoding option over on YouTube versus over on Twitch. But if you do have any questions about the bitrate, please let me know in the comment section below. And if I missed anything, feel free to add it in the comments. Let's all learn together. But if you found this video helpful, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe for more videos like this, and I'll see you all in the next one. Take care.